to God be the glory for this beautiful day. The Lord is good all the time. Thanking God for another day. Faithful Father, we want to honor your name again. We want to exalt you. We want to appreciate you. This is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, again, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Good morning to our God. Good morning, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, I welcome you in the fullness of your power. Good morning, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, family and friends, for coming. I love you. I appreciate your time in the name of Jesus. You're welcome. I am Usas. Onogo, always excited to talk about homes. We are meant for relationships and our homes, our immediate families and our, our immediate relationship. Let's talk about home once again in the name of Jesus. Today I have a topic I have called Create an Enabling Environment for Your Spouse. Wife, create an environment for your spouse that, you, that will enable him. Husband, Create an enabling environment for your spouse in the name of Jesus. God is our father. He has created us. He is the one we look up to. He made us to come onto this earth. Marriage is a part of the things he wants us to do. Our life is not a totality of marriage. There are other things we can do. The phone I'm using to record this video, it's somebody who created it. It's somebody who started it. The chair I'm sitting on, somebody did it. The car we drive, somebody did it. And anybody who can do some of these things that are outstanding, they need a sound mind. They need an, an enabling environment to get this thing done. And whoever it is, is a man, is a wife, is a woman. And you are either a wife or you are either a husband. So it is not just a man only. It is also the woman. Create an enabling environment for your spouse. Create an enabling environment for your spouse. I imagine why the Bible will say it is better to dwell on the rough to on the top roof, dwell on the roof, than to dwell with a nagging woman, with a contentious woman. It is not only a woman that is nagging, it is not only a woman that is contentious. There can be men who are very troublesome. There are men who you cannot live with. It says it is better to dwell with somebody. Instead of dwelling with this kind of a person, go and stay on the roof. In other words, our lives are supposed to be in the home. There's this frame they used to make when I was growing up. Home, sweet home. Home is a place that is sweet. Home is a place that you come to sleep. When you are tired after the day's job, home is the place where you will come. After all that you have done, all that you have gone through, you leave the house, some people go to work three weeks, four weeks. After all that, you come home after this number of times and then home is the place to be. Home is the place where you come you have to forget some stress of the workplace. You will not need to do any writing of what has happened in the workplace. Home, sweet home. In our homes, I'm asking you spouse, you husband, you wife, create that enablement for your husband. Create that enablement for your wife, where they can fulfill their God-given purpose, where they can thrive, where they can say, 
this is what God is telling me to do. I need to tell my husband. This is what my, my, my instinct is telling me to do. I need to tell my wife. And then she will not be afraid to tell you. He will not be afraid to tell you. Holy Spirit of God, thank you. We are come to do something. Is somebody who designed this earring I'm wearing? Is somebody who designed this wrist watch? This shirt I'm wearing is somebody who has designed it. I am not sure a mind that is troubled can be organized to do something. A heart that is worried cannot be organized to do anything. People of God, I have been married more than 15 years. And I know what it is when a person is troubled at home. Sometimes you want to run away. Sometimes you are thinking, what should I do? Sometimes you don't even have somebody to share it with. And sometimes you are afraid to say, if I share it with anybody, would I be the talk of the town? When your heart is not at peace, even when you eat the best food, the most delicious food, it will not reflect in your body. You wear the most expensive clothes. They will be wondering, the clothes will be going separately and you are going a separate way. This, our hearts, it has so much it does for us. If our heart is worried, if our heart is not at peace, if our heart is not at its best, we are not going to get maximum results. Outside of marriage, you have come to fulfill a purpose. You have come to become what God wants you to be. You have not just come to marry, have children, eat, go to the restroom. No. What you are designed for, your husband, your wife should be a part of the success story. Your husband should be a part of the success story. Your wife should be a part of the success story. It says, it is better to dwell on the rough top, on the top roof. Psalms chapter 21, Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 19. Let us read it. Proverbs 29 and verse 19. It says, It is better to dwell in the wilderness, praise the Lord, than with a contentious and an angry woman. Nine, 29 9 says, It is better to dwell in a corner of a house top. Praise the Lord. In other words, a person can be an angry person. A person can be a contentious person. A person can be a different thing. A person can equally be a peaceful person. A person can be a friendly person. A person can be a wild person. A person can be a beautiful soul. People of God, family of God, you are born to, be, to do something. You are born to be a wonder. You are born to be celebrated. And now you are in marriage. I talk about family. I talk about home. Spirit of the living God, speak your word into our hearts. Let it fall into good grounds in our hearts in the name of Jesus. You that is in marriage, are you an angry person? Are you a contentious person? Are you full of bitterness? Are you full of envy inside your home? The Bible says it is better to dwell in the wilderness. There's no food in the wilderness. There's no furniture in the wilderness. There's no biscuit in the wilderness. If it rains, the rain might beat you. When it's sunny, the sun might beat you. But in the home, there's shelter over you. The Bible is saying, if a person is an angry person, 
Don't stay with such a person. Go and stay in the wilderness. Go and stay in the corner of a of of a of a top roof. That will not be the portion of everyone here today. And as many as we come across this video, create an enabling environment for your spouse. Is your wife a teacher? Is your wife a doctor? Is your husband a preacher? For a person who is a preacher, because my husband is a preacher, he needs quietness. He needs an environment where he can hear the word of God, get inspirations. He needs instructions to move forward. There's also a person who is a medical doctor. He needs sound mind. For instance, a medical doctor who is a surgeon, you need to operate on somebody. You could have five clients to operate on. There are times the book you have read may not work. The Holy Spirit will inspire you. It's in that place where you are doing the sojourn. Cut here. This is where to cut. That's why you will see. They will say, this person has separated twins. Why the children were in the womb? God did not say it's only that person that can do it. Holy Spirit, thank you. That's why you will see a style. Nobody has created it. Only this person has done it. Holy Spirit, Help us as family members. I am your friend who is talking about family. I have been married 15 years. And so I know where I'm coming from. I'm talking from somewhere. Create an enabling environment for your wife to thrive. For your husband to thrive. Don't press them. Don't suppress them. Don't subdue them. Let the glory of God that is being put into every one of us as family members, let it be revealed. Let the grace of God find expression in our homes, in our lives, because of what God wants us to do. So many things are in disarray. I see some things on social media when I go there, I am imagining... Are these people human beings? Are they reasoning? Are they thinking right? Your husband, help your wife. Your wife, help your husband. They are not aliens to you. They are here to, for you to help them. He is here that you should help him. She is here that you should help her. Would you not be glad on the day you meet Jesus? Your wife will say, my husband was always there to support me. My wife was always there to support me. I couldn't have achieved this. I couldn't have achieved that. But my husband was always there for me. My wife was always there for me. Create an enabling environment. Create an enabling environment for your husband. Is he a politician? Continue to encourage him. He will win. Is he a doctor? Continue to encourage him. He will succeed. Is he a businessman? The business will thrive. Don't be a, dis a, 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 a negative person in his life. Don't say, you have done that thing before. You didn't succeed, so I cannot support you. No, continue to support your, your husband. Continue to support your wife. The Bible says, in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 19, it is better to dwell on in the wilderness than to dwell with a person who is angry. I know that the people who are here, you are not an angry person. You are not a contentious person. You are not a bitter person. But eventually there's anyone who has these traits that is making your spouse to go beyond, to go back. Not to make the grace of God to find expression. As you hear the word of the Lord today, you I receive the peace and the grace of God upon your life to cause you to be what God has called you to do. In the life of that man, in the life of that woman, in the name of Jesus. Imagine you are in the house. You hear good news. And you are at home. Good news is what we will hear in our homes. 
Good news is what we will be had in our homes. Praise the Lord. People of God, while I was thinking, I got this, the Spirit of God inspired me on this. Imagine Mary, the mother of Jesus. Joseph did not create that environment for her to carry the Savior of the world. Do you think Mary would have survived the survived the stories that she would be hearing? And we don't know who impregnated her because the Bible didn't tell us all of that. Imagine a woman, a young girl comes to say, I am pregnant. The Holy Ghost has impregnated me. If Joseph did not support that young woman in her days, are you sure the story would not be different today? People of God, your husband is a good person. Your wife is a good person. They are not devils. They are not aliens. Support one another. If anything has gone wrong, talk about it amicably in your home, not inviting a third party. There are too many ills, too many errors taking place outside that you should carry your home as a family to an outsider. See your brother, see your husband like your brother. See your wife like your sister. In short, see her like your, your first daughter. And see your husband like your elder brother. Create an enabling environment. There will not be room for deception. The enemy cannot deceive the woman. Go and do a silly thing. The enemy cannot deceive the man. Go and do a silly thing. There are too many silly things going around. And so let us safeguard our homes. Let us safeguard our children. Let us safeguard our homes. Let us safeguard our community. My family is good. Your family is good. The other family is good. The enemy will be stranded. People of God. Just like Joseph, he supported Mary in those months of pregnancy, in those months of delivery. And a savior of the world was born. People of God, you are a savior to a family. You are a savior to that community. You are carrying an answer to that society. You are carrying a solution. You are carrying the answer to a problem. But if we are not, our minds are not thinking right. Our brains are not relaxed. Our heart is not relaxed. Sometimes the best of us may not come. People of God, create this enablement. This, create this environment for your wife. Create this environment for your husband. Your husband is the best man that could come your way. Your wife is the best woman that can come your way. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. If anything hasn't been going right before now, I speak peace into that home. The peace of Jesus comes into that home in the name of Jesus. Every troubled waters, every worrisome, every problems that is draining you that is killing your mind that is affecting your peace of heart in the name of jesus i speak peace into that home peace be still peace be still peace be still in the name of jesus the power of god in our homes we cause us to be a shining star to reflect and to show forth the glory of God in the name of Jesus. People of God, the Spirit of God dwelling in our heart causes us to be a wonder. The Spirit of God can only come to you when you are born again. Be born again in your heart. Be born again. How? Accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Jesus, you have come to die for me. I accept you into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. Cleanse me. Sanctify me. 
Write my name in the book of life. I walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. I walk according to your word. I walk according to your precepts. And your glory will be revealed in my life. In the name of Jesus. It is only a man and a woman that have accepted Jesus. That can be a woman of peace. A husband of peace. Otherwise, you will be a contentious husband and a contentious wife in the name of Jesus. There's this passage of scripture I want to read to us. Psalms chapter 77 and verse 16. Family of God, people of God. When I read this scripture, I got something from it. Psalms chapter 77 and verse 16. It says... The water saw thee, O God. The water saw thee, they were afraid. The depth also were troubled. Husband, that is not your portion. Wife, that is not your portion. How? Your wife can't see you and would be afraid. The waters, they saw God, they were afraid. Husband, you cannot be a person when he's coming home, your wife is afraid. Wives, you cannot be coming home and your husband is afraid. That is not our portion in the name of Jesus. Peace in our homes. Peace in our homes. Peace in our homes. We will create an enabling environment for one another in our homes. And we will raise children who will grow up in these homes and will be representatives of the of jesus christ of nazareth in the name of jesus if you have said that sinner's prayer welcome to the body of christ your name is written in the book of life make our time study the word of god not pray for me pray for me you also have power in your mouth sit down on your own Study the word of God like this. If it is a chapter, study it. If it is five minutes, pray. The Holy Spirit wants to interact with you. Jesus wants to talk to you. Study the word of God and our lives will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Thank you once again, my family and friends for coming. From my heart, I appreciate you for your time that you have given I appreciate you deeply in the name of Jesus. I do my teachings regarding homes and family. I want our homes to be happy. I say I am 15 years in marriage, more than now. I'm still in my honeymoon. The devil knows it. I am very excited. And so what do I do to get this thing done in my home? The Holy Spirit also inspires me. I am excited to share my experience on this platform. In the name of Jesus. Jesus in our homes. In our lives. Cause good things to happen. In the name of Jesus. Jesus in our lives. Working wonders in our homes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. For giving us victory. Thank you for causing us. To be that person. That our spouse needs to thrive. In the name of Jesus. Every Sunday at 4 o'clock, United Kingdom, and Nigeria, 5 o'clock, that's when I bring his word regarding our homes and our families. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you always in the name of Jesus. God bless you all and see you again next time. Bye-bye. I love you all. Bye.